Warning. This program contains frank and mature discussions intended to educate and advocate on the subjects of sexuality, sex, and gender and body positivity. Due to the nature of the topics being discussed, this may include subject matter and language that some may find offensive. This program is intended for adults only. If you are under the age of 18, if such material offends you, or if it is illegal to view such material in your community, please exit now. Welcome to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show. This is a nugget episode, and this month on Polyamory, we're talking to some amazing people and their world of poly, what they're doing, what they're doing with it, and what they think about it. Today on the show, I have the amazing Ivy. I've gotten to know Ivy over the last few years. Ivy, say hi, and hi. tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, my goodness. Um, I have been um, practicing ethical non-monogamy and polyamory since about oh, the mid-2000s, and it's just kind of been going strong ever since. Once I discovered the community existed, I kind of just went full bore into it and haven't looked back, and I've enjoyed it, really, really had a good time with it. Now, you didn't just go full bore into it. You actually helped build a community, and that's what's kind of special about you. Can you tell us a little about this? <laughs> Yes. Um, so you're right. I, I didn't actually go full bore. But when I did start out, I realized that I was having some experiences that I would qu- probably qualify as less than. So they weren't like the most positive experiences. So I kind of sat down with myself one day and was like, gosh, you know, we need a support group, a discussion group. We need something to bring people together and have people like hash out their experiences and their insights and all of that. And ta-da, we started in my apartment at the time and we just started talking about, and when I say we, I mean, I just kind of started inviting people that I had met over the years or over the, actually the, the months or so that I had been um, doing this. And we just started gathering in my apartment on a regular basis and just started sussing things out. We just started talking about our experiences and what worked and what didn't. And I guess, I guess we just kind of built it from the ground up. So let me ask you something, because I know something a little bit about your group. Um, was it always meant to be poly, or was there another aspect that you were kind of, you know, um, working into it as well? Oh, well, um, yeah, we were, we, were coming at, we were coming at it from, like, the ethical non-monogamy and the polyamory and the open relationship. We were also blending in some of the, the what we call kink, you know, some of the kink, the BDSM aspects, because in the world of kink, there are, um, you know, there's, there's consent, there's power exchange, there's DS, there's all this stuff. And for a lot of people in the group, we had multiple dynamics. So we had a dominant with maybe two or more subs or even a sub with one or more dominants. And that became kind of a segue into that intersection of, wow, how do you manage that? I mean, so it wasn't all just, um, you know, for lack of a better term, I guess it wasn't just all vanilla (laughs) relationship, multiple relationship, that sort of thing. Um, It was a little more, um, you know, it was just like you said, it was the, the kink and the, and the poly as well. They just kind of all blended together and it just seemed to fill the niche. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, can, can you tell us about, give us just a, a little snippet of some of the, uh, the highlights or some of the things that made you really feel good about building this community? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, I think overall, I, the highlights for me, I mean, and I've been doing this now for several years. Um, but the highlights for me has always been, you know, maybe checking in with someone after the discussion and, and hearing uh, that that particular discussion really helped them or gave them some insights. Um, really the most powerful and the most rewarding thing about all of this is just knowing that I've helped some people not have to go through some of the, the less positive experiences that I went through. Right. Yeah, that, that's 
big reason why we do this show. That's a big reason why I know you did you you produced and and facilitated <laughs> the group, right? So yes. yeah. It, oh, absolutely. It, it, education. Education is where it's at, and just sometimes education can be as simple as talking to other people and just learning about their experiences. Because I've been to your, your, your a couple of your your meetings, and I I hear consent. I hear we get into sometimes the kink mm-hmm. aspects of things, and and how to work around some of the uh, the, the the foibles and, and some of the mistakes that were made. And sometimes it's just about poly, which is hey, I'm having this situation. Who can help? And everybody kind of helps out and gives their ideas. It's a really warm and inviting space. I really like that you've uh, cultivated. Thank you. We uh, we've worked hard, I think, as a group, and and just to make things really inclusive. And I think that that's that's not a hard thing to do. You do have to just sort of make sure you just keep reaching out to folks and reaching out to the community and saying, hey, we're here, come join us at such and such a place at such and such a time. Once that ball gets rolling and it starts growing, um, it just kind of takes on a life of its own. It's really, it's really awesome. It's just really cool how that works. Absolutely. So something um, we need to ask you a question. It's very serious here at the BCB. Oh, oh my. Uh, the podcasts, <laughs> and, podcasts and, and nuggets and, and podcasts and all these other things that we do. Um, if you were, you know, for, personally, you know, everybody knows that I'm the monkey. And right. it, and we have a barnyard here at the uh, at the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show. So <laughs> of course you do. Of course we do. And it's a very <laughs> inclusive barn, barnyard. We have people with puppies and goats, and and we also have dragons and mermaids. But what type of animal, if you could be any part of animal in our barnyard, what would you be, and why? Um, I'd probably be a hawk. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We have many I... birds yet. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, a hawk just because I'm incredibly fond of birds and I've dabbled tiny, tiny little bit in falconry. And, uh, I, I, you know, that's just they, they hunt and they come and land on your, your wrist and they go and they hunt down the rabbit for you. And it's just, you know, it's cool. And they can fly. And anything that can fly is pretty darn cool in my book. This is very true. You're able to get above everything, see everything, and, and assess the situation. Yes, perspective is all. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> so let, let's segue into another question here. Um, of course. What does your poly look like? Um, honestly, I like to think that my poly looks like just about everyone else in America who is working at raising a family and raising their kids and going to work and all of that were um, it's it's me and my partner and then my partner's wife and then my partner's other partner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're all, you know, we just kind of consider ourselves a poly family. We have kids, they go to school. It's kind of the usual, you know, like I said, it's just, it's, it's, we're just a family and we're just, raising our, our kids and, and it's it's not really glamorous. I think I think it's kind of funny when you start talking about polyamory and non monogamy and you know all this all this stuff. People are like, Oh, that's so glamorous. No, not really. I still have to wash dishes. You know, I just, there's still laundry to do. There's still like there's still the, the everyday living to, to do. The biggest difference maybe or the biggest plus as I like to think of it is In our family, there is permission among all the adults to go and have other relationships, other meaningful or, you know, however that looks to them, relationships outside of the configuration that we had in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's also a little bit of DS connected with many of our relationship dynamics inside the house. So that would be, I guess, the, the most exotic perhaps part about it. But other than that, it's, you know, polyamorous folks and ethically non-monogamous folks and people in open relationship folks, they're all out there just doing their thing. They just do it a little differently. And that's a beautiful I mean, place. That's a, that's a beautiful place to stop. They, that just gave me chills. <laughs> Ivy, you just gave me chills. That's, that's what it comes okay. down to. Okay. So we, we've actually reached the end of our time together. So we're going to have to probably bring you back at some other time so we can pick your brain on other things because that intersection I would love and, that. and parenting and cohabitating, you do a lot of these things. So, mm-hmm. um, 
This has been Ivy's, and this is the monkey, and we're going to say goodbye to all of you out there. And uh, we're probably going to keep talking for a while, but, you know, hey, if you get a chance – Stay with us this month. If you have heard things or you want to go back in time, check out the beginning of the month. Um, we've been doing polyamory all month. Check us out on iTunes. Like us. Subscribe. Go out to the YouTube channel. Subscribe there. You can watch our vodcasts there as well. It's a blast to watch us on live video. Um, go out to Patreon and subscribe there. You know, Give us some money. Help us uh, keep the show going because we're doing it for you and we love doing it. So anyway, we'll see you next time. This is Monkey signing off. Be good to each other. Hi guys, this is Sean Monkey Mackinney, Monkey for short. What you need to know now is that brown chicken, brown cow needs your love. It needs your help, and it, well, you know, personally, we could use your money. But short of that, what you need to do is go out and like our Facebook page. Number two, give us a review on whatever podcast ability you have. Go out to iTunes, go out to Google Play, give us a good review because that helps. Number three, subscribe. Subscribe to our podcast because that helps our numbers helps us with advertisers, helps us with everything. It makes it look good, actually. And number four, and this is very important, come close to the speaker. It's fantastic. You can go out to Patreon and support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash BCBC podcast. You can support us at whatever level of support you think you can manage. I don't want you to give us money if you can't do it, but I want you to give us some money and we'll give you back some love as well. We'll give you back some stuff. We'll talk about you on the radio. Who knows? But in the end, supporting us helps keep the show going. Subscribing to the podcast gives us better numbers. And liking our Facebook page, guess what? You always know when a show's coming. So, this is Monkey. You're you. We are together. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Fantastic. See you on the next show. For information on becoming a sponsor, advertising with us, or becoming a guest on our show, visit us at brownchickenbrowncowshow.com. All information in this show is copyright 2018 by the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show and Podcast and Marry You Creative Solutions. All rights are reserved.